In support of their view that material heretics are excluded from the body of the church, Sinovacantists typically cite the case of Liberius. In his treatise on the Roman pontiff, Bellamine writes, Although Liberius was not a heretic, still it was considered that on account of the peace made with the Arians, that he was a heretic, and from that presumption his pontificate could rightly be abrogated. However, Sinovacantists conveniently leave out the context of this passage. Bellamine continues, Next, it is not at all credible that Jerome and Rufinius could have such a discrepancy in their history that one could deny something and the other affirm it. Even if, even if Felix were an Arian, which still to this point is not proven, he did no harm to the Apostolic See. At that time, Felix was, Felix was an anti-pope, not a true and legitimate pope, as two cannot be pope together. The true pope was still alive, namely Liberius. Next, two years after the fall of Liberius, concerning which we spoke above, then the Roman clergy abrogated Liberius from the pontifical dignity and conferred it upon Felix. However, it should be noted that Bellamine confuses anti-Pope Felix II with Pope Felix II, who died in the year 492. This is evident from Bellamine's comment, to this, unless we should affirm that Liberius at some time defected from their constancy, that must be guarded in the faith, we are compelled to exclude Felix II, who managed the pontificate while Liberius was alive, from the number of pontiffs, although still this very Felix was venerated by the Catholic Church as a pope and martyr. According to the translator, translator's note, to be clear, not only historians but even the Church has now followed Bellamy's judgment on Felix II. On the one hand, Bellamine brings credible arguments, still, it muddies the waters even more. Modern historians know that the second formulary of Sermonium, which Liberius signed, was not in itself heretical, but could be interpreted as such. But when Bellamine argues that, a that essentially a pope can be removed from the pontificate by the Roman clergy because it appeared that he was heretical, he creates a problem in that by his own admission, Liberius was not a heretic. Therefore, how does Liberius cease to be Pope, unless it were by the will of the Church? This, too, is contrary to what he says in Book 2, Chapter 30, as well as in the same book.